This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRuck. In this video, I will show you how to configure a package to redirect rows that have errors and process the remaining rows. Here's the file I'll be using for the source data. It's an Excel file and it has eight columns. And uh, now we're over in Visual Studio and I'll start configuring the package. We'll drag the data flow task onto the canvas. Double click to go over to the data flow canvas. And I'll scroll down and find the Excel source component and drag that onto the canvas. We'll be using this to read debit card data. And now I double click on it to open the editor. I need to set up a new connection manager. So I'll browse to find that file I just showed you and here it is. And I click OK. And then we need to select the name of the sheet. And there it is. We can preview it. And there you can see all the data we just looked at. And I'll click OK. And now we'll get the OLEDB destination. And we'll be using this to write to debit card table. We'll connect the blue arrow, arrow and double click on the destination. And we need to set up a new connection manager for this. And we're going to use the one for the uh, new tutorials database and click OK. And then we'll choose the table that we want to write the data to. And there it is, debit card table. And we'll click on mappings to map the source columns to the destination columns and then click OK. All right, now I will save the package. It's all ready to run. So I right mouse click on the name of the package and select execute package. And it was successful. And it wrote 1310 rows to the table. We'll just go check that out in Management Studio now. And there again, we th have 1310 rows and everything worked just fine. So now I'm going to clear out that table. And we'll go back to Visual Studio. And now I'm going to edit the Excel file. I'm going to put data in the description column that's longer than 255 characters so that truncation will occur. So I actually have the data ready to go here. Oops. I'll copy that and paste it in this cell. And we'll save the file and then close it. Now, if we execute the package again, it fails as expected. And we look at the execution results. And here you can see that text was truncated. I'll copy this and paste it in our Word document so you can see the full message there. Text was truncated or one or more characters had no match in the target code page. The Excel source will check the metadata when we go back to configure it to redirect rows with errors. So we need to change the Excel file back to have no errors before we change the configuration. If we don't do that before changing the configuration, it will change the column length to accommodate a length longer than 255 characters, and that's not what we want. Stay tuned to see how I change the package to handle the error rows. Are you tired of updating packages because of changing metadata? How many hours have you spent accommodating new source and destination columns? How many nearly identical packages do you have to maintain? especially when you need to update hundreds of them. Well, you should check out CozyRock's Dataflow Task Plus component. 
Dataflow Task Plus provides the ability to acquire the metadata and map the columns at runtime. You can even use transformations on the data. Just add the changes at the source and destination, execute, and Dataflow Task Plus will handle the process of extracting, transforming, and loading the desired columns from the source to the destination without a need to change the existing package. It works with any standard SSIS Dataflow components, transformations, and application adapters. No more manual package updates. Design your SSIS data flows with Dataflow Task Plus and save hundreds of hours. A vision of completely metadata-driven processing is now possible. Download CozyRock's Dataflow Task Plus from CozyRock.com. It's free for testing and development within Visual Studio. Now we want to set it up so that it can take care of rows with errors and just redirect them to a different table and let the package actually complete for the rows that are good, that don't have a problem. All right, now I'm going to set up the second OADB destination to write error rows. And now when I click here, I'm offered this red arrow, which you always are, but I'm going to actually select it and drag it over to this OLADB destination. So I click here under error, and then I hold down the shift key and click down here to select all of the columns. And then down here, I'll change it to redirect row. And then I click on apply. And over here, under tr truncation, I'm going to do the same thing. And again, I'll just redirect the rows to my new OLEDB destination. Now I need to complete the configuration of this destination component. And now I pick a different table called Error Rows. And I need to click on Mappings so that everything gets mapped. And down here you can see all of the columns that are coming out of Excel are mapped to this uh, error row table. And then we also have two extra columns that it adds in to give us information about the error that occurred. So I'll click OK. I'll save the package. And then I right mouse click on the name of the package and I select Execute Package. All right, so uh, it was successful, and I forgot to reintroduce the long data. So now I need to go back and open up the Excel file. Go over here and copy this long data and paste it in here. So row 6 is our long data. I'll save the Excel file and close it. And we're back in Visual Studio. And I'll save the package. Oh, I need to go and clear out our table, too. So there's all the data. There's nothing in the error rows table because I didn't introduce the long data. So now. Our table is cleared out, and I right mouse click on the name of the package and select Execute Package. And there you see it was successful, and now we only had 1,309 rows go to the normal table, the debit card table, and we had one row go to the error rows table. So I'll stop debugging and open up Management Studio and select all the rows from this normal table. And there you can see we have 1,309 rows in there. And then in the error rows table, we only have one row. This is the row where I added some long data to the description column. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.